So let's do a git merge inside of VS Code. So first, I want to explain in basic terms what a merge is. Basically, you'll have two branches. Both of them will have changes. Maybe you've, you've updated some source code inside of your application. And you want to take the changes from one branch and merge them in with the changes from another branch. And you do that by doing a git merge. Now, what happens when you do that is there could be some conflicts. And within those conflicts, you have to then resolve them and then finalize the merge. And then you can commit all of the merge changes into your current branch. And that is basically what a git merge is. So to show you, I'll show you inside of VS Code. Basically, the first thing that we have to do is we have to create another branch. I just have this simple application here, and all I'm going to do is update a little bit of code in two different branches. So down here, I'll go and I'll create a branch, and I'll call it conflict, because it's going to be a conflict branch. And then we have a few options here. We can create the branch, we can create the branch and switch into it, or we can create the branch in a new work tree. The work tree is for another video, but I'll just create a branch and switch into it. So now that we're on the conflict branch, I'm gonna make a few different code changes here so that we can highlight a few different scenarios that may happen when you're actually doing your merge. So here, I'll add a few more exclamation points. Um, down here, I'll add another system.out.print line, and I'll say, this is a new line. And maybe I'll also add a function here, public string, uh, we'll call it unused and I'll just return nothing. So now I've added a bit of code. I'm going to actually commit it. I'll go over here. I'll stage the changes and then I'll just say um, committed some conflicts and hit commit. So now we've updated the code inside of the conflict branch. Let's switch back over to the main branch. To do that, we just click on the switch to branch button and then it asks us, hey, do you want to switch or do you want to switch and create a work tree again for a different video? So we'll hit switch to branch. From here, you'll see that all of those changes have disappeared and now we're left with what we originally had. Now, I want to update a bit of this code so that we can show a few scenarios that might happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update some of the code that we had already changed in the conflict. I'll say um, program is starting. Then maybe we'll have a new line down here instead of what the other one said. We'll do um, another new line, two. And from here, now we are going to want to commit our changes. We'll hit the plus button. We'll give it a message. We'll, the, we'll call this uh, main commit and then hit commit. So now we've committed on both branches. So what could happen is that we could end up with some conflicts and I'll spoil it. We are going to end up with some conflicts. So now let's actually do the merge. Since we're on the main branch and we actually do want to merge into the main branch, all we have to do is we have to go down to this branches, go to conflict, right click it, go up to merge branch into current branch, and then it will open up this menu where you have a few different options. Now, if you're just trying to do a bare bones merge, you can click on merge and then continue on from there. But there are a few other options that you may end up wanting to encounter, like doing a fast forward, doing a squash, doing no fast forward, or making sure that it doesn't automatically commit when you are doing the merge. If there's no conflicts, it will automatically commit when we select merge. If there are conflicts, then it will show you a new window that you then can resolve those conflicts in. Don't commit, just make sure that it will not automatically commit and you have to do that manually. So what we'll do is we'll just go to merge and we'll hit enter. So now we have a few different problems here and you'll see in the terminal that it actually ran a merge conflict and the conflict is the name of the branch. So it's merging the conflict branch into the current branch, which is the main branch. And we've actually ran into some issues. So what we can do is I'm going to close down this terminal and I'm going to hit resolve in merge editor on this, this button down here, because this will allow us to have like a little editor that we can see, um, all of the changes and make sure that we're selecting the correct resolution for those changes. So let's click reserve and merge editor. Now you get this little editor and I'll make this a little bit bigger so that we can see. 
Now you get this little editor where you can see on the left side, it's the incoming branch. On the right side, it's your current branch and it's the changes between the two and it shows you all of the conflicts. Now on the bottom panel, you have what is actually going to be the result of your changes that you've accepted between both the branches. Here in the upper right, you have a couple arrows and these arrows will actually guide you from one conflict to the next. So if I click the down arrow, you can see now I'm on this second conflict. If I go back, I'm on this first conflict and you can go back and forth between the two. So here in the panel windows, you actually have a few options here for each conflict. Here it says accept incoming, it says accept combination, and then it says ignore. And on the right, accept current, accept combination, and ignore for this particular conflict. Most of the time, you're going to be hitting accept incoming or accept current, but there is special case where you could hit accept combination, where you're actually wanting a combination of the two conflicts. And this does its best at merging the changes from both sides. So let's say on this one, I actually want to accept the incoming. So I'm gonna hit accept incoming, and now I can move on to the next conflict. And now say, I wanna accept the current one. So I'll hit accept current. Now you can see these result down here that we actually have the combination of acceptance that we are trying to get. You can also see on this right hand side, it says zero conflicts remaining. This means that we can actually complete the merge if we want to. Now, if we made some changes and we're like, oh, this isn't going to work, we can always reset the merge with this button right over here on the right. If we click this, it resets all of the acceptances that we've made, and now we have to resolve all of the conflicts again. So we can go up to the top, make sure that we're at the top, and now we can say accept the current on this one, and then on the next one, we can accept the incoming. Now again, we have zero conflicts remaining, but you can see the result is a little bit different. Now, say we wanted to keep this function, but we also wanted this return statement. What we can do here is we can actually just edit the result file. If we just copy what's in this function and hit control C here, and then go down into the result, we can actually hit enter and we can edit this file. Now we have our result that we actually want it to be and we can then complete the merge. It doesn't hurt to actually edit this result file because that is what is going to be the final result of the merge. Again, just to show you what the accept combination does, let's reset this and then hit accept combination. And you can see in the result, we have program is starting, which is from the right side. And then we have all these exclamation points, which is from the left side, as well as this function that we created that was on this left side. So you can see that there may be some mixing and matching with the accept combination that you may not want to do it all the time. And you may want to just manually copy changes over to this result file but it's there if you actually wanna use it. So here I'll hit accept incoming, and now I will click complete merge to complete this whole merge process. Now what it does is it's actually not done. It, you may have clicked that button, but it's not actually done. If you go over to branches on this left-hand side and then click on the main branch, you can see that merging conflict into main is still in action. And if you open up the terminal, you can see when you do get status that you're actually still in the merge. So you have to make sure that even though you click that button, you're not actually done, you have to commit the changes. So up here in the upper left, you can see that the message right now is merge branch conflict. You can change this to anything that you want. You can edit it to whatever message you want. Generally, you just wanna keep it whatever Git already has for you. And you always have the stage changes or you always have the files already in the stage changes, so you don't really need to change anything there. All you have to do is hit this commit and you will finalize the merge. So now in our source control graph, you can see here that we have a few lines pointing to where we actually did the merge from one branch to another. And this is the branch line where we broke off, we had two different commits, and then we merged them back into this main line. At this point, if we do get status again, we can see everything's clean. We can also check that the branch over here is now completely merged in. So technically we could just delete it and we delete it by right clicking, going to delete branch 
and then clicking on delete branch from here. Now we have successfully merged from one branch to another and reviewed conflicts all within VS Code. Now there is one more thing I wanna show you. So I'm going back into the merge editor to show you a conflict and a resolution that in VS Code, it, it looks kind of weird. So when we accept the current and there are no other changes from the incoming, when we hit complete merge, everything looks like it's finished. Inside of your left-hand side, there are no changes to any of the files that you have for you to commit. So this is kind of strange because in VS Code, all you have is this publish button and you don't have a commit button. But if I open up the terminal again and I do git status, it will say that I am actually still merging. So what I have to do in order to finalize this merge is I can either do the commit inside of the terminal or inside of VS Code over source control. If you click on this commit button, this little check mark, it will allow you to commit. But you do get a notification in the bottom right saying, hey, this is an empty commit when it really isn't because we're still in the merge. So what we'll do is we'll just hit, okay, create an empty commit. Now this is kind of weird because what you did was you just accepted only your current changes, which meant the merge kind of was useless in a way because all of the changes from the incoming branch were just discarded anyways. So what was the point of doing the merge? But I just wanted you to be aware that VS Code is a little finicky when it comes to accepting only the right side of the changes list. So with that, that is how you merge and resolve merge conflicts within VS Code and the VS Code merge editor.